directly here in Washington, D.C. Don't forget Obama, the postmodern coup, the making of a Manchurian candidate, and the distinguished presidential biography, Barack H. Obama, the unauthorized biography with uh, Rezco, Jeremiah Wright, Bill Ayers, Bernadine Dorn, Michelle, and Zbigniew Brzezinski all on the cover. Now let's look at Obama's method as applied to the, uh, the general approach to economics. Take Citibank. Citibank, of course, is the Robert Rubin clique. This is Robert Rubin who has successfully destroyed the stock price of Citibank, brought it down to less than $3. It's now hovering just above $3. But this institution is bankrupt. It's gone. Finish. Kaput. Citibank is gone, but the Citibank cabal, the clique, lives on because this is largely what's, uh, what's running the government. Robert Rubin and his protégés, Larry Summers and Tim Geithner and uh, the Eminos Gris, the gray eminence, Paul Adolf Volcker, that's what's running economic policy. The Goldman Sachs Citibank crew, remember also that Tom Daschle, Secretary of Health and Human Services, who's going to take your pension away. He's going to destroy your Social Security and your Medicare. And he's going to send the money to who he works for, Citibank. The senator from Citibank, the biggest employer in South Dakota, you wouldn't believe it, but the uh, credit card operation of Citibank in South Dakota is the biggest employer in the state, and that's Tom Daschle. He is a Malthusian bureaucrat. He is coming after you. He wants to take away your pension, take away your health care, and leave you nothing but your eyes to cry with. And the death count, the body count from Daschle's service to Citibank is going up, up, up. Oh, and of course, let's remember, Barkey has just appointed Joe Biden to be the middle-class monitor, the middle-class task force of the Obama regime. Who's Joe Biden again? He represents MBNA credit card gouging enterprises. The usurious and exorbitant interest rates on MBNA credit cards are out of this world, O-O-T-W. And uh, that's Biden. He's also the co-author of the bankruptcy bill of 2005, which makes it almost impossible this side of the great beyond to get rid of credit card debt used to be much easier. Right now, when people need to get back on their feet after an orgy of lending, it's, it would be time to shift some of the burden of that onto the credit card companies that were sending out credit cards to any, anybody they had on their mailing list. No, nope, can't be done because Joe Biden is defending the interests of those credit card usurious gouging companies all based in Delaware. So he, he's going to look after the middle class. <laughs> The fox is guarding the chicken coop with Joe Biden. But now let's look at Citibank. Citibank had ordered a corporate jet of the most modern and elegant type with leather seats, we're told, in 2005. Now, this is the typical demagogy of the mass media. Remember, the issue involved with money is not the individual living standards of these financial parasites. That's it's of some importance, but ultimately... This doesn't matter. The importance of what they do, the crime of what they do, is not what they spend on themselves, but how they misallocate and destroy the social surplus of the society as a whole. And in particular, their biggest crime is not the corporate jet. That's peanuts. It's chicken feed. It's, it's insignificant. It's the 1.5 quadrillion, 1.5 thousand trillion of derivatives, credit default swaps, structured investment vehicles, auction rate securities, uh, collateralized debt obligations, uh, mortgage-backed securities, asset-backed securities, options of all sorts, and so on. They have inflicted that on the world. That is the cancer that is sucking the vitality out of the world economy. That's the problem with these guys, not just their vulgar, bombastic spending and, uh, and that of their families and so forth. So now we have Obama sitting in the Oval Office saying, oh, I'm indignant that Citibank wanted to buy this corporate jet. And we're told that Geithner or one of Geithner's hacks and henchmen at the Treasury called up Citibank and said, boys, nix the corporate jet, nix the corporate jet. 
Now, this is a case study in demagogic propaganda, duping the masses, pulling the wool over your eyes. The first question, of course, uh, well, let, let's actually do this in the following way. Let's do the right-wing critique, as offered by Limbaugh, and then I'll offer a reasonable New Deal critique, and you see which is more, which is more powerful critique. The right-wing critique says, Obama, how dare you in interfere in the private sector? Citibank has got to be able to do what they want. If they want to give $20 billion in bonuses after getting that $20 billion from the taxpayers, that's up to them. They're the private sector. They know what to do. Stop with the class warfare. Let them do what they have to do. They've got to get these wonderful, talented, genius quants and others uh, to work for them, and they've got to give them the perks that they're associated, uh, accustomed to and so forth. So the right-wing critique is basically huffy, huffy, huffy that Barkey is interfering in the private sector. Let them give multi-billion dollar bonuses. Remember, those poor guys get the 25 to 50 percent of their yearly compensation. Right? Don't ask what the compensation is. And if you're unemployed, don't ask what the, what the compensation is. But you get the idea. The right-wing critique essentially says the private sector is sacrosanct the greed and the, the grasping of these hyenas, jackals, predators, raptors, ticks, and leeches is sacrosanct. Don't you dare touch it. So I think that's an impotent critique. I think that's a loser. Uh, it's also morally insane and economically wrong in today's world. Now, this would be a reasonable New Deal critique. It would be, first of all, to the facts, Barkey if you didn't want Citibank to be able to have corporate jets, and if you didn't want Citibank and AIG and so forth to give multi-billion dollar handouts in bonuses to your predators and, and quants and other sociopathic individuals who work there, why did you vote for the TARP? Why did you vote for the bailout once in October and then once uh, later on? Not only, Barkey, did you vote for it, you organized the majorities both times. It was your phone calls, Barkey, to the Black Caucus in particular and to other members of the Democratic House membership that got the majority for the bailout to go through the first time in early October. And secondly, in the last week of the old year, it was you, Barkey, who got the tarp, the second tranche of the bailout, approved, and you suppressed all of the, all of the opposition to that. It was actually the last week of... Mad Dog Bush Jr.'s presidential term. So the bailout as it is, is Barkey's baby. It's not Bush anymore. Bush proposed it. Paulson proposed it. But without Barkey, it could not have gotten through the House in October, and it would not have gotten through the Congress in general in the uh, week before the inauguration. And remember, Barkey wanted that done. He wanted that done so he would not look like being the guy responsible. Now, the first question, therefore, why did you vote for it? The second question, what are you going to do about it? Hey, you're president now. You don't have to go on television and say it's irresponsible. Start writing executive orders. Start saying, okay, anybody who got money off this uh, bailout, you're going to cut the corporate jets and you're going you're gonna to wipe out bonuses. No bonuses. Uh, you can also say, uh, let's claw back some of the bonuses, right? Let's send the FBI and the, and the Treasury men. Let's send the T-men to go after uh, the people at Citibank, like Bullet Bob Rubin, who got this money, and get some of it back for the people. No sign of that. And then, Barkey, what are you hiding? Well, here's what he's hiding. Notice when, when Barkey attacked Citibank, he said, this is irresponsible. You've got to be responsible. Stop being irresponsible. There's this thesis that he's working as a hypnotist, right, that Barkey is actually practicing mass hypnotism, a kind of modern Cagliostro. It may well be. We'll be back in a minute with why.